up. My top rated book on confidence is called The Super You. I'm sending it to you. Physical book, free. Go to the link down there. You got it. Stayallday.com. Congratulations on tuning in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you're going to become a go-getter, a person with a personal initiative, that go-getter energy to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Putting all this together, you get the mindset, the method, the podcast known as Work On Your Game. Welcome to the show. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. Today's topic is what you can do with your life. What you can do maybe as, as a business, as a job, what industry you could possibly get into, if it's not going to be sports. If it's not going to be sports. Now, I'm talking about this topic specifically for my sports enthusiasts out there who you've come to a point where you realized or you've decided, whatever you want to call it, that your future is not going to be the NBA or the NFL, and you know you're going to do something other than play a sport for a living. Now, maybe you're not going to, you, but you don't want to walk away from the sport. You don't want to completely leave the sport. You want to stay in it in some way, but you know it's probably not going to be playing. Now, this does not mean that you fail if you get to the point that you decide or you realize or someone tells you and you decide to agree with them that you're not going to play a sport. It means you walked away in strength. I mean, you gave what you had. You put your effort in, you worked on your game, and it just wasn't in the cards for you to become this thing. But it doesn't mean that you have to leave the game, doesn't mean that you can't be involved, and it definitely doesn't mean that you cannot make an impact. So you're pivoting right now. See, today's topic is a is not a prescription. I'm not here to tell you, all right, you can go into this industry or this one or this one. Listen, I'm sure there are 20 articles out there with a list of things you can do if you like sports. Today, is we're going to go at a little bit of a different angle. These are ways that you can provide others. You can provide to others, provide them value as a result of your sports experience, as a result of the fact that you have a passion for sports, both. And you can use these from both your bad experiences in sports and your good experiences in sports. These are ways that you can turn those experiences into something that can be a career for you, that can be a business, that can be a a big entrepreneurial venture for you, or maybe a job, a company that you want to join because of your sports experience. So let's go right into it. Number one thing you can do, is you can teach teamwork and leadership. Also mindset, mental toughness, discipline, confidence, all of those from your experience as an athlete, especially on the topics of teamwork and leadership. The reason that I'm mentioning those is because playing a sport, if you're playing a team sport at least, you've dealt with coaches, you've dealt with teammates, you've had some good ones and you've had some bad ones, at least in your opinion. What were the principles that made that teammate so good? What were the things, what were the mistakes that that coach made that made them such a bad coach? What did they not notice? What did they not care about? What were they paying too much attention to and not paying enough attention to on the other end of something? What are the things that made that leader a good leader? What are the things that made that leader a bad leader? What are the things that made this coach or this boss not a leader at all when it came to you? dealing with the players that you dealt with, maybe talking about yourself. What made you a captain of the team? What kept you from being a person in a position of leadership? Who were the best teammates that you played with? And they may not, they probably weren't the most talented ones, but who were the best ones that you most enjoyed playing with that you got the most benefit out of? And what were the things that they brought to the table every single day that made them such a valuable individual? You know the answers to these. Maybe you never considered the questions, but when you think about these, now you have some principles of leadership. You have some principles of teamwork. You have some principles of the mental game that you can go out and teach to other people, whether they be athletes, whether they be people in the business world, whether it be individuals, whatever it is, whatever it happens to be. But you have to mine your experiences to find these principles. So when I say mine your experiences, you got to sit down and think about this. Where did I play? What team was I on? What event did I go to? Who was somebody that I went against? What was one of my greatest accomplishments? What What was one of my biggest failures? And then analyze those and say, okay, what happened here? What went wrong here? What could I have done differently here? What did I overlook here? What did I not notice? What are some things that I could have done better in these places? What did this person do well? What did this person do poorly? Where did I make a mistake? Where did I do something great? Where did I just get lucky? Where did I have perfect timing? Where did things just not work out for me despite the fact that I did everything right? These are all ways when you mine your experiences, you got to mine your experiences pretty deeply so you can come up with these topics, you can come up with these principles, and then you can share them in different ways. You can be a podcaster. You can be a 
professional speaker. You can become a coach. You can become a teacher. You can become a, a sports coach or a, a person's coach, a company coach, an individual business coach, whatever it is you want to do. And it may be something that we're not even talking about right now that nobody even knows about. You can create that thing and become that person. Maybe you can write a book. Maybe you can make a, a manual for athletes or a manual for business people drawing on your experiences. And you don't have to lead with, hey, I used to play basketball, I used to play football. You can mention that as an afternote and it can be kind of something that comes up later or not at all in the conversation. You're just mining your experiences, coming up with these rich, valuable principles and sharing them with other people. That's what you're doing. That's how business works. When you do that, you get value back in exchange. Number two, today's topic is things that you can do with your life if it's not going to be sports, but you still want to stay involved in sports somehow, some way. You can, second principle is you can help guide the careers of others who did make it. See, maybe you were just unlucky when it came to the, the talent pool. Maybe you just got born in the shallow end of the talent pool. You're 5'7", but you love basketball. You worked out every day. You put all the hard work in, but you just don't have the height. You don't have the talent. You're not getting the opportunities. But somebody else is 6'7", and they got the opportunity. They got the shot. You can help guide that person's career. They hit that talent lottery. You can help manage their lives at every level. If you're talking to a, a high school athlete or a college athlete, even a pro athlete, are you able to edit and make Instagram videos and YouTube highlight videos? I mean, those are that's a pretty valuable thing right now for athletes. Everybody's trying to get their highlight, right? Everybody's trying to get seen, heard, known. Everyone's trying to create exposure. So if you can record footage and make highlight videos for athletes, that's something that can make you valuable. Just that off the top. Give them two of them every day that they can put out on their Instagram. That's worth something. All right, every day send them two videos that they can post on their IG of highlights of them that they got to be playing often enough. You can make two highlight videos a day, but you understand what I'm saying or working out or whatever it is going to be. That's just one thing you can do. You know a certain school subject really well, and you can help tutor these student athletes at a certain school that you know they need it. They know they need it. They know if they don't get this, that they're not going to be eligible and they can't play their sport and maybe lose their opportunity to go pro or whatever their next level happens to be. Can you do that? And you can charge people money for this. Listen, I tutor people in this math class. I know everybody on the football team coach has to take this math class. Listen, y'all pay me this much. I'll tutor all the players. So you can go to the players individually and just hit them up and do it directly. Look, five hours a session. I'll help you. I'll make sure you pass this test. You'll get a minimum of a C on this test if you come study with me. And I'll show you my study guides. I'll give you all the information I have. i pass you my notes. What is this? Be, be, have some ingenuity, ladies and gentlemen. That's really the point that I'm making here when it comes to guiding other people's careers is a million things that people need help with. Anything in life that you've been good at. This is basically what you're doing here in point number two. And I got more detail I want to give you here. But in point number two, basically what I'm saying is anything in life that you have been good at that has worked well for you, but you know other people for whom it has not worked. It has not pr produced the kind of results that they know they need or that they want. And you know how to explain it. You know how to teach it. You know how to do it. Maybe you could do it for them. Do it. Offer that. Put it out in the marketplace. You have a business opportunity right there. Anytime you're really good at doing something that other people struggle at, you have a business opportunity. But you got to be, first of all, you got to think of what it is. And then you got to help play players out with that thing. Help players stay eligible in school. I mean, any of you who are students or any of you who just know a subject really well, you don't even have to be in school. You can walk. Anybody can walk onto a college campus and talk to some students. I mean, if you're I mean, if you're willing to make those cold calls and get out there and get your face in front of other people, what about helping players manage their brands? Everybody wants to build a brand these days, right? Every athlete is a brand. Every business person is a brand. Every human being just wants to build a brand in some way because people want to get seen, heard and known and help them make money It'll help them fulfill their promises or help them take care of their families. It'll help them just get seen. Some people just want to be seen. All right. There's no other reason. That's just the end goal. They just want to be seen. They want to be heard. Can you help people do that? Help them manage their brains. And you go through an athletes, let's say you find all the rookies in some league and you go through their whole Twitter profile and find the tweets that they need to delete because they said something crazy six years ago when they were in high school and they don't want it to get found out by somebody snooping through their profile, posted in the middle of a game. And now for the next three weeks, every question they got to answer is about their racial insensitivity or something they said about women or how they were using the n-word in their profile or whatever something that they posted years ago that is completely irrelevant but people want to make a story of it now now they got to apologize they got to go on a whole press tour for it how about you help people how about you help people preclude that by going through their profiles and helping them out with that is there can you come up with a software program for that or maybe you just want to do the manual labor and go through it to train a team of people to do that for people 
how about you offer that as a service? And that's worth something. I think an uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, as we can see in the sports world these days. Are you good at writing? Can you let a player dictate to you what they're thinking, what's going on in their day, how their career is going, how they're training? And then you go ahead and you write down, you edit, you publish their blog or their Instagram captions, or you help them write a book. If you're a good writer and you can type pretty fast, this is a great business opportunity right here. I mean, you could just take a tape recorder and just talk to an athlete, let them talk into it. Then you go transcribe it, make it into a blog post. And now that athlete has a blog. Now that athlete has captions for their Instagram post. Now that athlete can put a book out. If you can do this, any of you who are good writers, any of you who like to interview people, any of you who are really into sports, this is something that I don't think, this is one right here is one that needs to be utilized more often. A lot, everybody out there has something to say. And especially when you're known, even when you don't have something to say, people who know you, who are fans of you, they want to know what you have to say, even if the answer is nothing. Help people put their word out there. They may not have the skills or the time or the talent or the resources to do it, but you have it. Listen, sell these things, people. There's value in this stuff. Point number three. Today's topic is what you can do in professionally if it's not going to be sports, but you still love sports. Do you train people in a way that's unique? Can you teach something that is unique to athletes out there? Now, we know there are thousands of trainers out there sports trainers that I'm talking about but what can you offer that maybe could help you separate yourself from everybody else there was this trainer I knew named Justin and he was a basketball trainer and there are millions of basketball trainers right maybe millions or at least thousands of basketball trainers but the thing that Justin specialized in was that he knew how to look at somehow he had this way to look at statistics and figure out how a player shot a higher percentage when they were dribbling with their left hand as opposed to dribbling with their right hand. Now, I know we're getting more and more advanced analytics these days that maybe are uncovering this for everybody, but this guy was doing this. This was like five years ago. He was telling me about it. He can tell a player like, okay, Kevin Durant, when you dribble to your left, you shoot this percentage. When you dribble to your right from the same spot, you're shooting this percentage. So we need to work on this. We need to hone this. We need to make sure you're strong here. This is the one spot on the floor that you weren't making a whole lot of shots last year. We're going to work on you scoring from that spot. So what can you do to specialize what other people are doing? What can you do to help specialize your training to isolate, isolate what other people could do better individually? I'm not talking about in general for athletes, but individually, hey, LeBron James, this is something, this is the one area of the game where you were a little bit weak last year. This is how I can help you. Here's my proprietary system. This is what I can do for you. I'll give you a free session. You tell me if you like it. If you like it, we'll keep working. If not, it's all good. If you do like it, we'll keep working. Refer me to 10 people. And this is how much it's going to cost. These are things that you can do, people, to get yourself out there in the sports world. Athletes need help. So if you're not going to become the athlete, just look at the athletes who are going to become those athletes, the pros, the college players, the guys with the scholarships. See what they need. Everybody needs something, ladies and gentlemen. I've talked about this in a previous episode of the show, and it's not always money. Some people just need someone to listen to them. Some people need someone to run their errands for them. Some people need someone to pick up their dry cleaning. Some people want to put a, they want to write and talk about themselves, but they just don't have the time. They don't have a writing skill, but they can talk. If you can do it, listen, when you're filling a void for another person and giving them something that they couldn't otherwise provide for themselves, charge them for it, they will pay for it. Now, I got to give you some disclaimers. Today's episode comes with some disclaimers. So I gave you points number one, two, and three, right? Number one is teach teamwork and leadership and mindset. The things that you learn playing sports, teach them to other people. They don't have to be athletes necessarily. Number two, help guide other people's careers. What can you bring to the table for them? Help them do that they otherwise can't do for themselves just because of the constraints on their time, energy, attention. Number three, if you can train athletes in a way that is unique, a way that can separate you from the masses of trainers, you got an opportunity right there. Now the disclaimers. Disclaimer number one, this is point number four. You have to earn your spot in these industries just as you would as an athlete. Everything that I'm telling you here, I'm not saying that just because you can do this or you go offer this to somebody, they're going to hire you on the spot or they're going to write you a check for $100,000 or they're just going to start posting you on their IG story. It's not going to happen that quickly. You got to earn your spot. You got to prove that you're actually worth something. Go to, if you ask your coaches, if you still play sports, ask your trainers, ask your parents, ask anyone you know who had to hustle to get into an industry and almost everybody if they're in an industry that they love they may have to have had to hustle in order to get to the spot that they're at ask them that they had to earn their spot when they first came in with people looking at them funny like i'm not sure you're serious no i'll give you a little bit of a shot and let's see what you do with it you are going to have to hustle to earn your spot and it's probably not going to be doing something pretty when you got to hustle to earn your spot it's not going to be pretty it's not going to be glamorous it may not be a lot of roi on it at first but you got to be willing to do it Therefore, if you're in this just to make money, 
If you listen to this because you're thinking, all right, what are some ways I can make some money off sports, even though I'm not going to play sports? This episode ain't for you. This is not for people who are only concerned with making the money, because at first, when you're earning your way in and earning your stripes, it ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be fun. And it may not be even any money in it at first. So if you're not, if you're serious, I mean, let me say that one more time. (laughs) If you are only focused on making the money and you're not serious about actually giving real value, this ain't for you. Number two. Second disclaimer, point number five, you must come from a place of wanting to provide actual value to another person. This is where you got to come from, not from a place of what can I get, not from a place of how can I get known, but from a place of actually providing value to other people. And if you listen to stories of people who kind of just morphed into being somebody's manager, being somebody's agent or being somebody's right hand person or having a certain job that didn't even exist before they started having it, almost all of them, you listen to their stories, they'll tell you. All I was doing was helping this guy out. All I was doing was just doing things for him that I had already been doing. And eventually he said, you know what? Why don't you officially be my manager or officially be my agent or officially be my personal assistant? Because you're already doing all these things to help me out. Why don't you just keep doing this and we'll make it official? I'm going to pay you this much money. So you got to come from a position of wanting to give value to another person. It can't be. Can't you? Let me ask you a question. Can't you just tell when a person just wants to do something just to get the money? just for what they can get in exchange for it. They don't really care about the work. They just care about what they're going to get out of you or get out of it or get for themselves. You can tell, right? Every single time, right? Okay, so don't you think other people can smell it coming off you if that's the way that you approach them? Rhetorical question. People can see it in you as well. Point number six is the third disclaimer. There is a lane, ladies and gentlemen. There is a lane that is wide open for any individual who really cares and has the skill to deliver. If you really care about what you're doing and you really care about delivering value to somebody and you are actually good at it, you can deliver that value and you can do it consistently. There is a lane wide open for you. Now you got to be willing to step into that lane. You got to be willing to show your game. You got to be willing to make an investment in yourself and in that other person, whomever that other person happens to be. But there's a lane wide open for you. The opportunity is there for you. You got to be willing to invest in yourself. You got to have the skills to deliver and you got to really give a damn. You got to really give a damn about the work that you're doing. It can't just be about what am I going to get? When is this person going to put me on? When am I going to get a full time job? When are you going to give me a check? When are you going to follow me on Twitter? Listen, there's a lane wide open, ladies and gentlemen. And if you ask around at your anyone, you know, who happens to hire people, whether they're, it could be a coach, it could be a parent, someone you know who runs a business, ask them, how many people do you come across? How consistently do you come across people who, number one, really, really care about delivering value and number two, have the skill to deliver that value? They're going to tell you they're few and far between. It's not as it's not as crowded a lane as most people think. People might think there's a crowded lane. It's not crowded at all. It's a wide open. It's the fast lane. All right? It's the HOV lane. Okay high occupancy vehicle lane there are not too many people out there who care a lot and have a lot of game at the exact same time so if you could be that person there's a lane wide open for you you just got to step into that lane and you got to prove that you got the skills to drive in it let's recap today's topic which is what are the things you can do if it's not going to be sports number one teach teamwork leadership the mental game mindset things that you learned as an athlete and how they could apply to someone else who may even be in sports or is completely outside of sports and doesn't even care about sports. Now, the key to doing this is you have to mine your experiences. You got to dig deep in the mountains of your experiences to find the most valuable lessons and takeaways and make them into something that is digestible for another person who didn't live what you live. Point number two, help guide careers of other people. You may not have made it as an athlete, but there are a lot of people who do and they need help. There are things that they need. Maybe you find out by talking to them, but if you can't get close to them, you can find out by watching them. Provide that value. Just give it to them. Get their attention by giving it to them instead of coming to them and saying, hey, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. Anything you need. All that's doing is giving them another job to do. You come up with the job, do it yourself, give them the work, show them their work and let them decide what they want to do moving forward. Number three, if you can train athletes, can you train the way that makes you stand out? Do you have something you offer that is proprietary that separates you from everybody else out there in the training space? And the disclaimers. There's some disclaimers from doing these things. Even if you may have heard a great idea here today, 
Number one, you have to earn your spot there just like you earned your spot anywhere else. You earned your spot as an athlete. You earn your spot in a regular job. You have to earn your spot in these things. And it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be fun. You may not get any ROI at first. So if you're in this just for the money, just for the shine, just for the attention, just for the payback, this is probably not the thing for you. Number two, you must come from a place of wanting to provide value and actually help people. You, you can tell when another person only coming for what they can get out of a situation. Well, other people can tell if you're that person as well. And the last disclaimer, there is a lane wide open, ladies and gentlemen, wide open for any individual who can provide value and they have the skill to provide that value. And they really want to provide value. They really care about the people they're helping. They really care about the people they're coming to. They really care about the people they're making proposals to. If you really care and you really have game, there is a lane wide open for you. But you got to be willing to step into that lane and prove yourself. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.